Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Lugnus Monster. Today, we'll be doing a Star Wars The Black Series Mandalorian comparison. As of right now, there are a ton of Mandalorian figures in the line, all the way starting back with number 94 in the red box line. Since then, we've gotten, like I said, a ton of different releases of him. And just recently, I did pick up the Maldo Crease Mando, and I wanted to do an updated comparison video. I do already have an already existing one up on the channel. If you do want to go check that out, it'll be pinned in the card and linked in the description if you do want to go and watch that one. But this is my brand new updated version. And yeah, as you can tell, there are a ton of Mandalorians in the line. As of right now, there is only three that I don't own, so this is almost all of them. I don't have the white box version, which is exactly the same as number 94, but just with a white box. And then there are also two credit collection ones I don't own, just because I think the credit collection ones are really dumb and I don't tend to buy them. So yeah, real quick before we do get into the comparison, if you are new to the channel, make sure to go down and hit the like button and subscribe. We are actually doing a giveaway at 8.5k subs. We'll be giving away this this clone Captain Rex. You do have to be subbed to the channel though to enter, so make sure you go down, hit that like button, and subscribe. Once we hit 8.5k, I'll release a giveaway video. All you have to do is comment on my giveaway video to enter. I also do really want to thank you guys for all of the recent support. We just recently hit 7.8k, which is incredible. So yeah, we're getting really close to that giveaway. Like I said, if you're not subscribed, it just helps out the channel a lot, and I do really appreciate it. Anyway, on to the comparison. So I will be judging this comparison based on five criteria. 1. The box, 2. The paint apps, 3. The accessories, 4. The accuracy to the media, and then 5. Luke Ness personal opinion. And basically how this will work is I will rank each of these 1 out of 7 since there are 7 uh, figures. So if say number 94 has the best box then he will get a 7 and say Beskar has the worst he will get a 1 and then uh, the, the figure with the most points at the end of all the categories will win the comparison. So first up, looking at boxes, uh, coming in at last place, only going to get one point, is the number 94 Mandalorian box. I absolutely love this figure, one of my favorites of all time, but it's just a standard red box. We've seen it uh, more than 100 times, and because of that, it does get last for boxes. Coming in uh, second to last with only two points is the standard galaxy style box for the Mandalorian. This one is slightly better because it does have that amazing Mando artwork there, but we've seen the galaxy package a ton of times now. It's nothing new, nothing special, but this one is looking pretty cool. Getting three points, it's going to be the, um, I'm just going to call him Muddy Mando because I believe it's the Arvarla 7, and I cannot pronounce that, so I do apologize, but uh, he's going to get three points. I do love the artwork on this, but I just don't think it's as good as some of the other ones on this list. Coming up with four points will be the standard Mando build-up pack. This one's slightly better. He does have uh, Grogu in the side of the box, too, which I love. He's got a nice like little holding pose, and I think it's pretty cool. So that one gets four points. And then five points does go to the snowy Mando, the Maldo Crease one. This one is slightly better. I do love the expression Grogu has in this one. He's looking down at the little spider egg. Pretty cool. And of course, I do love the snowy detail on Mando. Getting six points is going to be the credit collection Mando. Now, this is the only credit collection figure that I like. Uh, it's the only end credit scene that's worth making a credit collection figure over, and this is the exact end credit scene that the figure's based off of, so this one gets uh, pretty high regards in my opinion, and uh, because of that, I do love the on card and everything too, so he does get 6 points. And then coming in first place, getting 7 points, is going to be the carbonized box. Now in the past, I've absolutely poo-pooed on this box I'm like before I just wasn't a big fan of it but over time it has grown on me after getting waves and waves of galaxy style packaging not changing much I've really come to appreciate the little different like color variations that we could get it back in the olden days even when we got the carbonized line here and so I really came to appreciate this box and because of that it does get seven points the next category is going to be paint apps and I did give these three the very last points for paint apps um, they will be numbered accordingly, but these two, they're just molded in that silver color, and so because of that, there's not very much paint apps on it at all, so those two did get last. This one is uh, going to be the third, I guess third last, or I guess fourth best, whatever you want to call it, but... Um, yeah, I, it just has little kind of random splotches of color here and there, and I'm not a huge big fan of that. I know it is accurate to the um, the actual 
end credit like image there, but with all the other credit collection figures, it just it just it just doesn't work. And so because of that uh, whole credit collection kind of idea, this one did get a little bit lower. Next up, we do actually have the third and fourth place here. So I did give number 94 fourth place and carbonized third place. 94 is great. He does have a ton of little weathering uh, and blast marks all over his armor, as well as like kind of the dirt and grime on his helmet. Great paint apps, uh, great weathering. That one came out really great. And of course, uh, third place with, I want to say, four points goes to, um, actually it might be five points. I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to go back and look, but it goes to carbonized. I do love the shiny paint apps. It came out great, and it's one of the better carbonized figures. And then coming in, number two and number one, we do have the Snowy and Muddy Mando. I think for obvious reasons, these two did get the first spots. I know a lot of people do hate on these figures for just being cheap repaints, but I absolutely love both of these figures. I did give the number one spot with seven points to Muddy Mando. This one is because it does have this brand new uh, like layered paint technology to where it kind of gives it a nice textured feel and a nice look to it where it actually looks like it's layered with mud, not like it's just this thin coat of paint over it, but to where it actually looks like it's weathered in thick mud and I absolutely love that and so then in second place with six points did go to snowy mando this one is great and it's a little bit more subtle but I do love the little like frosty snowy effects on it it looks great and uh, some of the best weathering we've gotten on a figure in a long time the next category is accessories and these three are the last for accessories just because they only come with the rifle and the pistol. All the other Mando figures come with more accessories, so these three, for obvious reasons, are going to come in last place. Beskar Mando is going to come in fourth place, and that is because he does come with the rifle, the pistol, and also, brand new to the Beskar Mando, the jetpack. He does, of course, come with the cape as well. I did take off the cape for this review, but uh, yeah. This is the first Mando to introduce a jetpack, which is a big upgrade compared to the last three. Next up for accessories, we do have the three Mando build-up packs. Coming in third place, and I guess last of the Mando build-up packs, is going to have to be Muddy Mando. This one is a pretty solid figure, but he does really only come with Grogu and the Pram, and then of course that little egg. I think the egg's pretty cool, but it's not my favorite part of this set. I think Grogu is definitely the best part, and I do love the eyes closed head for him. But, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is it didn't come with a knife. I actually gave Mando the knife that he's holding. That's Cara Dune's knife. But, like, that's one thing he really needed was a knife. That's a big part of the scene. And they didn't include it, which is a real shame. You know, of course, this is one of the, uh, like, original suit Mandos. So, no jetpack either. Coming in second place, I did give it to Snowy Mando. Snowy Mando is very, very cool. He does come with that spider, which is awesome. I'm a big fan of Black Series creatures, so it's nice to get the spider. It does also come with Grogu, but no pram for Grogu, which is unfortunate. He does come with a little stand with a little, uh, like, hatched spider egg. But overall, um, you know, no pram for Grogu, and this Mando also does not come with a jetpack, so because of that, he did get second. And then coming in first place for accessories, I did give it to the original Mando build a pack This one is top tier when it comes to accessories. It has a removable helmet, both the pistol and the rifle, five pieces of Beskar, the tracking fob, and then of course Grogu and the pram, and the jetpack. So he has everything, the whole package. He is the best Mandalorian for accessories, so he will be getting the full seven points. For the next category, we do have accuracy to the media, and for obvious reasons, these two are going to get last. I did put the credit collection at very last, just because uh, it's not really accurate at all compared to the the carbonized where at least like the color palette is slightly more accurate so uh yeah but you know for obvious reasons they're just not super accurate next up we do have these three figures i'm gonna have to give the fifth place spot to normal beskar mando this one is pretty accurate biggest problem is he doesn't have the correct uh, thigh plate. They didn't make a new mold for this yet whenever this figure originally came out and so because of that that thigh plate is inaccurate. Then there is this one which is exactly the same except he does have a removable helmet so that one is slightly more accurate because of course Mando could remove his helmet so the Din Djarin face makes it a little bit more accurate and then I did give the I want to say fourth place or maybe that's the third place. Yeah that's gonna be third place too. 
to number 94 Mando. This one is all accurate with the armor wise and I think the weathering is also just a smidge more accurate too so because of that he gets the number 3 spot. And then last up for accuracy we do have these two figures. I did give the number 2 spot to Snowy Mando. That's because they did upgrade the thigh piece so for comparison this one is the correct thigh piece and I'm really glad they did decide to upgrade that. So that is more accurate, and of course the snow weathering is accurate to the scene as well. So, he gets the number 2 spot. Coming in at the number 1 spot, I, I had to give it to Muddy Mando. Obviously the muddy paint is accurate to the scene, but it goes so much deeper. They actually did make a brand new mold for the chest armor that is broken after getting attacked from the Mudhorn. Just have this like nice battle damage underneath, and I absolutely love that. Came out great, and then one small, very subtle detail that they did, they gave him the accurate uh, shoulder pad. This is after he got the Beskar shoulder pad, but during the Mudhorn fight, so it's the Beskar shoulder pad without the Mudhorn signet, which is awesome. Brand new mold for this figure, and it's the only time it's ever been used, which is just incredibly awesome, so... Yeah, they really knocked it out of the park with all the accuracies on this figure, and it's one of my favorites. I am definitely in love with it. Anyway, guys, the last category for this comparison is Luke Ness Opinion, and now I will give you guys my number one choice, but for the rest of them, I did rank them accordingly. We just don't have enough time in this video for me to explain all of the rankings, but coming in at the number one spot with seven points for Luke Ness most opinion I guess or the the greatest Lugnus opinion it goes to number 94 best Garmando I just have a ton of connection to this figure it was the first video ever on my channel was a review of that figure and it was just one of my first figures altogether that I ever got uh, in the black series so it's a figure that got me into collecting got me into making YouTube videos and I just have a ton of connection to the figure so he gets seven points I did rank all of the other ones accordingly so let's go ahead add up all the points and uh, let's find a winner anyway we have tallied up the points and coming in last place with only 12 points it did go to credit collection Mando for obviously obvious reasons this one's the worst I, I think we can all agree with that it's cool for what it is but it's definitely not the best Mando here coming in sixth place was only one more point it is actually Beskar Mando from the Galaxy packaging. This one is a great figure for what it was when it was released, but there's just been a lot of figures released since then that have uh, outdone it. So, like I said, great figure, but just doesn't live up to some of more of today's standards. Coming in fifth place, it does go to Carbonized Mando. This one is a great figure overall. It was very hard to get when it first came out, but I do love the shiny box. Definitely some of the better boxes that we've gotten, and I've, I just love the carbonized paint apps too. Back when the carbonized line was great, the first wave, that's when this one was introduced, uh, carbonized line used to be great, and then they ruined it, and this is just kind of like the glory days of carbonized, to be honest. We actually do have a tie for fourth and third place. That is both these two, number 94 Mando and the Build-Up Pack Mando. Both are great figures, both have their pros and cons, and I do love both of them. I do highly suggest both of them if you can not pick them up. But yeah, they did tie, I guess, for the third and fourth spot, however you want to point it. But they both got 20 points. And then coming in second place, it's actually Muddy Mando. This one did really good in a lot of the categories, but it just fell short by only two points. And this one is great, one of my favorites. I know a lot of people complain, like I said, about the whole, like, muddy or the snowy Mando, just because they're cheap repaints. But to be honest, they are great figures if you just look into it. And I do really highly suggest them. They have their pros and their cons, but to be honest, they are really good figures. And then that leaves number one to snowy Mando. This one actually really surprised me. I was not expecting this one to win overall going into this video but I'm really glad it did it has uh, great paint apps great accuracy to the media I do love the box and of course it does come with like I said a lot of the accessories that um, you would want in a set like this so I think it definitely deserves the number one spot It's one of my favorite figures ever since I opened it and I do highly suggest you pick it up if you can it is a little pricey but I think it's definitely worth the price and I just love that snowy look so yeah, that is going to do it for the video. If you enjoyed the like button and subscribe, comment down below if you guys do agree with my rankings, and what is your personal favorite Mandalorian figure, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.